In today's video, we'll take a look at and test two different NVMe SSD Thunderbolt enclosures, the Orico M224 and the Acasis TVU405, to see which is better, as well as to check to see if there's any performance differences between the two. If you want to know more about these enclosures, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications so you'll be notified when there's new content. I've been testing the new Mac Studio and I needed some additional storage that I could use for working files as well as video editing. I've used several types of external SSD enclosures as well as an Orico enclosure which I did an earlier video on which I'm currently using at work. This forced me to look for an additional unit and since it's been a while since I actually saw what was out there, I started looking at other options in this space. During my research, I saw that a Casus unit was in the pr same price range as the Orico, so I decided to pick up both and compare to see if there was any difference. Though Orico sent me products in the past, this unit as well as the Acasis unit in this review was bought with my own money, and neither company has sponsored this video in any way. Let's go through the hardware for each product to see how they differ and run some testing to see if there's any difference in performance. I'll be using the Samsung 980 1TB drive in both enclosures, which is arguably not the fastest drive out there, directly connected to a USB 4 port on the Mac Studio. To start with, let's look at the Orico. There isn't much in the box other than the enclosure, screws, silicon plugs that can be used to hold down the drive, a heat shield, screwdriver, and a cable complete with a USB-C to A adapter, and the blue thermal pad. Installing the drive is pretty straightforward. You first apply the thermal pad to the drive, then carefully snap on the heatsink and make sure it's flush. One of the key differences, as you'll see from the Acasis unit, is that this device uses a heatsink and the Acasis unit doesn't. On the surface, this may seem like a good idea, but it does have some drawbacks, as the drive itself will dissipate the heat into the heatsink, but there is poor contact from the heatsink to the outside enclosure, which you'll see later in the video. Once you get the heatsink installed, simply slide the drive into the slot and mount it with either the silicon plugs or with a screw. I find these plugs to be a bit of a hassle, so I tend to use the screw instead. Next, just apply the lid and screw it down. As there isn't much contact from the heatsink to the outside lid, the enclosure does remain a bit cooler. However, the drive itself will end up running hotter. Oracle claims this design has 20 to 30 percent better cooling than other devices. However, in my opinion, this only applies to the enclosure temperature itself and not the drive temps, as most of the heat is actually retained and not transferred to the lid. We can verify this later when I run some tests. Next, let's look at the Acasis unit. Again, there's not much in the box. You get the instruction booklet, screwdriver, screws, and two different thermal pads, a 0.5 millimeter and a 1 millimeter, and of course the enclosure itself. Very similar to the Orico unit, installing the device is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is slide the drive into the M2 slot and secure it with the included screw. I did want to point out that the screws they provide are all mixed in a bag, and there's actually two different sizes, so you need to make sure that you use the shorter screw for mounting the drive. They do include two in case you drop one or if one gets lost. Next, install the thermal pad on the top of the drive and make sure you've removed the plastic protectors on both sides. I use the one millimeter pad as you need to make sure that it contacts the lid because that's where most of the thermal transfer is going to take place. Most of the drives I tested this with use the one millimeter, so I would recommend that you use that first. Once you've applied the pad, simply put the lid on and secure it with the four screws. Now that we've assembled both enclosures, let's put them through their paces. As you can see from the Blackmagic speed test, these devices perform almost exactly the same using a dedicated USB 4 Thunderbolt port on the Mac and using a 1TB Samsung 980. There are faster SSDs out there, but as I already had this drive, I used it to establish a baseline. Moving on to the file copy test, here again we see basically the same performance with a very, very slight difference favoring the cases. However, the difference is so small that it's within the margin of error, so I would be comfortable in saying they perform about the same. Lastly, I did want to test out my theory on Orico's claim of being a cooler design, so I measured the temperature outside of the case for both the Orico and the Acasis unit 
after running it for several hours. Then I saturated each by running continuous benchmarks for about 10 minutes straight and measured the outside temperature again. At idle, the Orico measured 99.3 degrees Fahrenheit and the Acasis measured 105.8 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes of stress testing, the Orico measured 110.8 and the Acasis unit measured 118.9. Neither showed any evidence of throttling, however it was clear that the Acasis unit transferred more heat to the lid and the enclosure causing the case temperature to run hotter than Orico's more isolated design which traps more of the heat inside the heat sink. This doesn't really make one better than the other, but your choice may be decided by your use case. As the Orico is dissipating heat to the heat shield that's inside, and the heat shield does not make good contact with the enclosure lid, the result will be a cooler case, but the drive itself will retain more of the heat. You might find this important if you're handling the drive often due to mobility, as the extra heat on the case of the Acasis is noticeable when you're touching it. However, if your drive is mainly on your desk or you're doing a lot of drive intensive tasks such as video editing, then you may want to consider the Acasis unit. Though it will heat the case more quickly than the Orico due to the drive's direct contact with the case, it will dissipate the heat from the drive more effectively, especially under stress. It basically turns the whole enclosure into a heat sink. I really thought when I started this review that there would be a clear winner, but as it turns out, the performance is pretty equal and it really boils down to your use case and your personal preference. I don't think you'd go wrong with either of these and both will let you extract the performance of your SSD. I haven't had any issues with either of these and I've been hammering these devices with multiple video exports without any glitch at all. Anyway, that's about it for today's video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it useful, please don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit notifications so you'll be notified when there's new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.